Good morning, good morning. Do, 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 do. Good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, welcome to a daily dose of joy. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. We are here to dose our brain with positive neurotransmitters and to practice choosing joy. <laughs> Wild, radical idea. But a doable thing, a doable, practical, incremental habit. And I've developed these microdosing tools or microdosing habits, and they are just a container to help us leverage that neuroscience, to build those habits into our life that help us step into joy, step into knowing that all is well with us, step into our well-being, and it's incremental. It's okay. It's part of the journey that we don't feel it all the time, 24-7. Um, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Please know that uh, it just keeps rising, yeah. <laughs> happy tears just how much faith and how deep my knowing is that you're all rising <laughs> oh good stuff um, yeah it's a beautiful morning here pouring rain which I love <laughs> It's one of the things I rewired my brain to. I used to be a sun baby. Like, it was always in reference to how much sun it was, what a good day or how good the weather was. And then I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I am missing out on some of the plethora of experience of life. And I started to wire in gray skies, rain, cold. Um, yeah, and seeing, really seeing the gifts in each one and you know rain I think that's a, an easier one for people to get because it feels so cozy there's a oh yes I'm gonna have candle mist I'm gonna light all my candles today and I can't see my candles in my house in the summer I don't really use a lot of candlelight in the summer but in the winter and that's when we have some rain oh yeah candles and lanterns that beautiful glow the sounds on my house of the rain, so cozy. And also there's a little bit of like getting under a blanket, being in the rain, a sense of like, okay, I can actually slow down. Yeah, 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 cozy in. Yeah. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So I've been a uh, little slow to get here because I was just taking in and shifting my brain. You know that my default state of when I wake up has transformed over this time of learning how to rewire my brain and how to shift the neurochemistry in my brain. I used to wake up in the morning like somebody had just set off a shotgun in my bedroom. I mean, heart racing, bolting out of bed, lots of stress hormones, cortisol, adrenaline, norepinephrine. And it was just not having anything to do with a thought or anything. It was just the way my physiology, the way my baseline had gotten wired. And um, so that no longer happens ever, which is fantastic. But then even better is I've continued to use after I did the primary rewiring of my brain, I continued to use these microdosing tools to continue to elevate the baseline of dose chemistry in my brain and, and shift my habits and my point of focus. And so the majority of the time I wake up with a little like, ah, you know? And sometimes I wake up like, hee hee, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then occasionally I wake up with a little like, little worry on the brain. Oh, there's that. And that's part of life. Um, and I do even see that part shifts, uh, getting less and less. But still sometimes I'll wake up with, oh, I 
you know, there's this, how am I going to solve or fix that over there? And it's so helpful to have tools and resources to let go of fixing it and choose joy and just choose to feel that and align with that. And then by the time that I come back to that, it's from an inspired, easy place. If even, if I even need to come back to that. <laughs> so, and the more and more I can turn into my own well-being, knowing all is well with me, and shift into feeling happy, the easier and easier the conditions of my life become. Things often take care of themselves or the inspiration or the drive is there and it all kind of joyfully falls into place. Well, I started off with a lot of um, talking this morning. I was just doing a lot of thinking on these topics and and part of those tears earlier was a lot of it was just thinking, what are some of the things that make me happy? And one of the things that makes me happy is innovation and creating um, and expressing and sharing and communicating and, um, and improvising and I just thought about how much, what a gift it is to turn on this camera in the mornings and have this moment, say, let me share, let me um, innovate, let me rise. And so that we're rising together, it feels really good. So I was having little moist eyes in just the feeling of joy that I'm doing this that I love. And that leads me to know that I'm putting out there to the world something of value. If it's lining up with my inner being and sparking joy and peace and sense of well-being, then I can have more confidence that not only do I have like the science and the ideas and but that the actual energy of what I'm sending you guys is um, gonna meet you at a good place. So thank you for that very long preamble <laughs> sticking with me. Um, now I'm gonna get to the whoopsie daisy stories. So uh, I really love having a point of focus of looking for the funny in my life. <laughs> and it's there. And so um, this is going to be very dog. We're going to do dog whoopsie daisies because Lord, y'all send the magic elves of dog training. I've been at it for a while. And uh, granted, I'm a novice, you know, teaching myself how to train a dog and training the dog at the same time. That, um, hmm. He is a tough nut to crack. He is a very, very large puppy. <laughs> when you rescue a puppy, you never quite know what you're going to get. He's big <laughs> and getting bigger. <laughs> so one of the things that I'm doing is having more puppy play dates. And so he, we went to a friend's house to have this puppy play date. And their puppy is a hound who just was fixated on, on chasing this ball. So I had the ball <laughs> and the hound was just on me. On me. I was totally, because we were trying to put the ball away so that they could play, the two dogs could play together. The hound was like laser focused on playing fetch with this ball. So I go to toss the ball. <laughs> Actually, I was trying to do an overhand toss up a bank, up to the top of the bank to like have the dogs run up there. And I tossed it and it went bloop and hit a rock not very far in front of me and then bounced right back into my chest. <laughs> and my friend who was there was like, great throw. 
<laughs> Whoopsie daisy. I mean, it was like a boomerang to this ball. <laughs> but boing. <laughs> All I could do is like, oh, whoopsie daisy. I haven't played a lot of fetch or baseball in my life. So <laughs> Got a lot of athletic background, but that's not one of them. It was, yeah, I threw a boomerang. A boomerang to this ball. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. The dogs were just like, what is going on? I mean, is it then? Um, well, another development is, so you know how you have dog gates or children's gates to block off areas that they're not quite ready to handle. They don't have the commands to know how to navigate, like a kitchen where you don't want them jumping on the counter. So I have a regular dog gate in my kitchen, which I mean, maybe for one month, worked with my little puppy. He's so big and thick and heavy. He just kind of throw his weight onto it and would knock it down. So it's been a gradual engineering project as he's grown. So then it was like, okay, well, I'll just put this little stool behind it. That would hold it. Then it was put a, a 20 pound like hand weight. Let's put the weight, the stool and the weight. Well, then that wasn't quite working. Well, let's put another weight. Let's put two weights in the stool. Then that still wasn't working. I mean, he was literally, he just <laughs> like a bull, just come on through. So then let's put this big box full of cans. <laughs> so like a homemade weight. And also that, at that point I needed more height. So in the middle of this gate, he was starting to be able to go right over it. And I mean, right over it, y'all. He, he would do it in the blink of an eye like that. Like it was just like, put his paws on top of it. Boop, he just pop himself over. So I was like, okay, it's now too short. Standard dog gate, easily too short. My dog just whoop, 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 whoop. I'm like, all right, we gotta make it taller. So I had some, you know, the signs that you use for, um, they're like, uh, like we had one for my son's graduation or you might have it for an election or you might have it for selling a house. They're like signs that on the, they're on metal wire stakes. And so, um, you know, people, signs you use to temporary signs for putting in front of your house. That would be it. Like some, some of them say for sale. The ones I had on hand were like for my son's graduation from middle school. And I had another one from a neighbor and I used those. So now we've got the dog gate, the weights, the box full of cans, the stool, and then sandwiched between the gate and all the heavy objects are these <laughs> two front yard signs because we needed the, the height. I needed the height to come up. Still, those signs were too flopsy so he could get on them and then jump over. So then I got um, another piece of wood, sandwiched it in there. All right, all this <laughs> is the barricade between my house and my kitchen. <laughs> so now when I want to go into the kitchen, I have to shimmy one of the sides. Then I kind of <laughs> lay against the door frame and cartwheel. <laughs> Not enough to go, not enough to go forward through, but I could go sideways. <laughs> this is how I'm getting in and out of my kitchen. I don't cartwheel the way to the floor, just cartwheel to, to the fridge and then leverage over that. <laughs> the entryway to my kitchen and um <laughs> so that was whoopsie another whoopsie daisy story just how that all got constructed but the whoopsie daisy the dog jumps over and then you do more the dog jumps over whoopsie daisy okay the dog jumps over whoopsie daisy <laughs> and then the other morning I was I had a little earbud in I was talking to a friend had a nice little phone call and uh oh my goodness and they wanted to use a tool with me, but I was putting myself on mute. So I put myself on mute, had the phone in the kitchen on the charger, cartwheeled out of the kitchen, was um, taking care of some other things in the house, and then they finished. <laughs> but my phone is on mute 
through the gauntlet <laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> so they finished, they're like, Winston? Winston. Winston. <laughs> and as you're saying this over here, Winston, Winston, I'm cartwheeling back into the kitchen. <laughs> and then reaching around into the cabinet while I'm still sort of partially only <laughs> through the gauntlet and answering the phone call. And I answer it laughing. So <laughs> Oopsie daisy. I didn't think about that when I left the phone on the charger, which would have been a natural flow thing to do until you have to go through this unusual gauntlet. Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> ah, life is full of funny opportunities and it makes the discomforts and the inconveniences less judgy, less, less, um, less irritating when they also become a source of humor. So um, I hope those examples uh, <laughs> were hopefully tickled your funny bone. If not, just laugh, choose to laugh and use this time to get that dose chemistry going. And also just connect to the story that like those things that seem just to ah, make you want to pull your hair out, find, see if you can find, play with, is there some way that I can see the humor in this? Is there some way that I can retell this story, recreating the story of your life and find the humor in it. And then you'll find it comes more and more spontaneously, just like laughter. Thank you so much for spending this time playing with whoopsie daisy stories with me. Let's take three gentle breaths. In solidarity, we are choosing joy. Mm. Mm. May today surprise and delight us. I'll see y'all tomorrow.